Hey, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house? Amen, amen. He deserves all our claps. He deserves more than our clapping. Amen, amen, amen. We give honor and glory first and foremost to our Heavenly Father. Amen. To my brethren behind me, Reverend Thompson. Yes, sir. I'm going to go on ahead and say, Sister Thompson, you're too close. Came back out now. <laughs> You can't run now. <laughs> Reverend Thomas, out of the memory of your wife, Reverend Marshall, Sister Marshall, to my wife, Sister Jacobs, to our deacons, deaconesses, trustees, trustees' wives, it's fine male choir, the baddest male choir in the land. Amen. Man, they're the only ones that make you rock without guitars. <laughs> Amen. Sister Jesse, to our drummers, to our ushers, to all of you. So glad to see you all today. So glad to have. Amen. I don't get to see them that much. I got two sets of cousins. Amen. And I believe with their wives, Brother Randy Mays. And amen. My cousin EJ Hall. Amen. So glad to see y'all in the house today. Amen. Just don't know how encouraging it is to get a pop-up surprise every now and then. Amen. Amen. But as a word from the Lord, as we've entered into this 2020 vision year, amen, if you will travel with me. I want to go to the book of Acts all right, all right. chapter number 8. When you get to the book of Acts chapter 8 I want to go down to verse 26. may find our kinfolk in this scripture. <laughs> Acts chapter 8 verse number 26. And I can read this whole account for you here but I just want to read 26 through 30 so we can set the pace. If you dare say amen. amen. And even the wages holler away. Man, it reads, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south into the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, a Kandaki queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure. And had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah's. And said, and this is where our title will draw from, understandest thou what thou readest. Thank you for standing to honor the word of God. If I can deal for a few moments, this text, I'm going to deal with you from the subject. That is this question Philip asks. All right. Understandest thou yeah. Yeah. what thou readest? Yeah. If 
You want the Talladega, Alabama version? Do you understand what you are reading? Last week, we looked at a blind man. Today, we are looking at another blind man. Last week, we said that blindness represents not only physical blindness, but a lack of understanding, a lack of information, or simply a refusal of the truth. You're blind when you don't know the truth because the truth is enlightening. It's so enlightening that Jesus says in John chapter number 8 that if you be my disciples, then you shall continue in my word. And if you continue in my word, then you be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Proverbs 4 and 7 says this, and many of us quote this scripture. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get an understanding. If you don't have an understanding, you are blind. How many disasters have come at the hands of men and women who lacked understanding? You try to assemble something new without the instructions. Or the instructions were in Chinese or some strange language. It's a disaster. I've tried it before. Item didn't come with any instructions. Try to put together a bicycle without instructions. You may know what a bicycle looks like, but if you don't have the instruction to know how to deal with the details, you may end up with an accident on your hands. You ever try to put a swing set together without instructions? Swing set come in a whole bunch of pieces. It's not just four or five poles and a couple of swings. There are a lot of things that go into putting a swing set together. I know this. Had to do it on my job years ago. If you try to do it without an instruction, someone may get hurt. You ever try to put together some other toy or some other device for your child without the instructions? Simply what I'm saying is that when you try to do something without the understanding to know how to do what you need to do, you will end up with disaster on your hands. And things that I just mentioned, those are small scale things. There are wars that have been started in this country or in this world for lack of understanding. People have lost their lives in battle because of a lack of understanding. Either the war started for lack of understanding or the war was lost for lack of understanding. There have been bridges that have been constructed and for lack of understanding, the bridges have fallen. There have been building structures that have been built and the engineer may have thought that they had the understanding to build this structure to be able to withstand everything but there are some things that they didn't take into consideration and for lack of understanding there are lives that had been lost for lack of understanding on behalf of someone blind there have been lives countless lives lost But when it comes to the word of God, it's even more serious than trying to build a building without understanding or bridge without understanding. Because if I die and I'm a Christian, I know I'm going to live again. But if I die and I don't know the word of God, then I die without the knowledge of the very thing that saves my life. How serious is it, preacher? Let's look at the text to see how serious a lack of understanding 
can be. There are four things that I want to look at in this account of this Ethiopian eunuch uh, that I hope that we can take to heart today and take from this and uh, that an understanding, a better understanding of the word of God should be our goal, not just for 2020, but for the rest of our lives. Yeah first thing that I want to look at in this account is that the door was wide open for worship. Yeah, yeah. This man was not a Jew. This man was not an Israelite. He was not a son of Jacob. This man was an Ethiopian. And those of us who know where Ethiopia is, it is in Africa. And at one point, the only people who could worship God were those who were born of the bloodline of Jacob. But God just so happened to have made it away. It's no coincidence that he opened up the door of worship to whosoever would come and allow themselves to come up under the Jewish law to be Jews, not Christian. He was worshiping as a Judaizer, as a proselyte, they called him, but not as a Christian just yet. So he went up to the temple to worship, but God has something else in store for this man. And the thing that I want to draw from this is that the door for worship, the door for understanding, the door to have a relationship with God today is more wide open today than it ever was in history. See, back then you had to be circumcised. Well, this eunuch didn't have a problem with circumcision, and I don't want to be graphic, but you can go home and look up what the eunuch was, but he didn't have a problem with being circumcised because he didn't have anything to circumcise. This man, he was a eunuch and he was from another country and he came to worship God. He just didn't know how to worship. And Paul explained it like this in Romans chapter 10, how sad it is to not know who you worship. He said in Romans chapter 10 that brethren, my heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved. But the problem with them is that they worship, but they don't know. They, they, have, they have no knowledge of what they're doing. The door is wide open. The problem comes in when you don't have knowledge of what you're doing. This man, the scripture paints this man out to really to be a great man. It says he was of great authority. He was right up under the queen of the Ethiopians. He had his hands on all her money. Is that what it said? So that let me know that, praise God, it doesn't matter what status you hold, whether it be high or low, God accepts whosoever will. Then it also lets me know that it doesn't matter how high you climb up on a financial, on an economic, on an occupational, on a social scale. God is still higher than all of us. None of us are beyond worship. God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he bids us to come to him to worship him. door is so wide open for us today that you used to have to pay for a Bible. Now you can get it on your phone for free. It was where at one point you had to go to church on Sunday to listen to a preacher. Now you can listen to a preacher Monday through Saturday, then come to church on Sunday. God has opened the door for worship. Well, where's the problem? Here's the second point. However, you can go to worship and leave empty. All right, all right, all right. Second point, you can go to worship and leave empty. I want to start by saying this. The only emptiness that I want to feel when I come to worship God, whether it's in this house or it's in my house, it's the emptiness of knowing that I laid everything on the altar for him. I want to know that I poured my soul out before the Lord. When I stand to preach his word, I want to know that I did everything in my power to do what God has empowered me to do. I want to leave it all out on the table. And that's the only emptiness I want to feel when I come to worship. But there are some people who come to worship, amen, and their the worship experience may be high, but they leave low. Sometimes the word goes forth and the truth goes Sport, but you still don't know what the preacher preached. The singers might have sung good, but you went home feeling nothing. And it's 
all because you went to worship based on a feeling. You went to worship trying to get your emotions tickled. You went to worship trying to get something to make you feel good about the situation. But when you come to worship, you don't come to get. I want you to understand you need to come to give. This man, this Ethiopian, had gone to the church to worship. But since he was worshiping with the Jews that was not worshiping in the name of Jesus Christ, it was empty worship. They were just reading words. They were just going through the motions. He just went to do what they went to do. And everybody in the house was dead because Jesus was not in the house. And there are some of us that come to worship just to check a box. That's the sad truth about our society today. Most of the time, many people go to church just to say, I went to church. I'm going to tell you right now, straight up, black and white, going to church ain't going to save your soul. I mean, many people sitting at a church house right now that'll be in hell when Jesus come back. You heard him when he said that not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, are going to enter into the kingdom. You got to know who he is. You got to have a connection with him. Not a connection with the stuff we do in church. You need to know that the stuff we do in church is because we have a connection to him. can't just go to church to check a box and say I went to church. Why do you come to church? We come to church to worship God. And if we got the mentality right in the first point that we come to give and not to get, then you'll understand by the time you get to the second point, praise God, that it's not about you. It's about him. You come to pour out your soul before the Lord. I heard my uncle uh, LL say that God meets us in worship. All throughout the Bible, you see God speak to those who come to the altar to, 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 to burn sacrifices to him. Those who have a heart, amen, that came trying to meet God through worship. God met with them. When I come to worship God, I want an experience with God. And I need more than just an experience with you. I love all y'all. But if I don't have an experience with God, I don't have what I need. Then some, you come to church, and the leadership in the church is detached. Some come to church and the preacher is detached. Seem like you come to a house and everybody just going through the motion. They amen sound dry. They praise sound dry. The sermon sound dry. Devotion sound dry. I don't know what's going on in this house, but everything making me feel dead. sad thing how sad is it to go to worship and you leave empty so this Ethiopian went to worship he left what was called worship he was still trying to read the Bible he was trying to get an understanding of what was going on what they were just talking about there they obviously didn't explain to him what was going on obviously because they didn't know what was going on if they knew what was going on they never would have put Jesus on the cross this man was in a sad state he was in his chariot and couldn't get home because he was trying to figure out what just happened at the church house God Almighty you ever been there you're trying to figure out what it is why I can't get anything out of church you find yourself saying I can get this at home that's the way the devil wants you to feel 
You feel like you don't need the church. And I want to clear up that misconception because we just read in the response of reading that we are all members of one another. So I can't sit home by myself and reject all of you just because I have the option of watching a preacher on TV. He said, forsake not the assembling of the saints together. When we come together, when we worship like we're supposed to worship, guess what happens in the house? Healing happens in the house. Blessings happens in the house. Fellowship happens in the house. Love happens in the house. Direction goes forth in the house. I'm in the hospital when I'm in the house. How sad it is it to be in the house, leave feeling like nothing happened. Uh -huh. Tell you why something was happening with this, uh, why it felt like nothing was happening with this man, which leads to point number three. And this is the saddest thing because it's still going on today. Point number three is that if you miss Jesus, you miss it all. This man was reading about Jesus, but didn't know the scripture was talking about Jesus. Because the folks, folks that he was worshiping with, they didn't love Jesus. They loved their religion. They didn't love holiness. They didn't love the Holy Spirit. They didn't love what Jesus did at Calvary for them. They were simply just going to church. This man missed it because nobody preached to him Jesus. Nobody took the word and applied it to the messenger of the word. They didn't apply it to the God of the word. They didn't apply it to who the word was talking about. And how often today do you go to church? How often do you see on television that even the sermons are about self? It ain't even about Jesus anymore. It's about living my best life. It's about getting my blessing. It's about windows of heaven opening and pouring down. It's about feeling good about my life. But who is preaching Jesus today. Some people think they ain't had church. Unless the praise team got up to say. Some folks think they ain't had church. If you ain't had no guitars playing. Think they ain't had church. Because... They got a piano, but they don't have drums. They don't think that they have church because the pastor, pastor ain't hooping or hollering. And if he's just teaching, he ain't preaching. But I want to tell you what Dr. Springer said. That he said that all teaching is preaching, but not all preaching is teaching. What he meant is that in some poor pits, you got a bunch of empty wagons. If you got an empty wagon rolling down a dirt road, you don't hear nothing but clop, 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 clop. But if you got nothing in the wagon, you got no substance. You got to have something in the word. You can't just get up shouting and hooping. Hallelujah, ain't the Lord all right. You got to have Jesus. He's the reason for the Bible. He's the main character in the story. He's our reason for being right now. He's the reason I can say that I know I'm saved. He's the reason I'm filled with the power of God. He's the reason that the power of God broken vessel and I hadn't fallen dead yet. He's the reason that grace and mercy covers my life. He's the reason for every blessing that comes. He's the reason my marriage works. He's the reason my children are doing all right. He's the reason my job is all right. He's the reason everything falls in line with my life. You can't have 
success without Jesus Christ. You can do enough motivational speaking outside the church, but when you come in the church, you need to talk about Jesus. This man went to church and nobody talked about Jesus. It's a sad thing to hear a preacher preach a sermon and they said nothing about Jesus. He's who it all centers around. John said that he is the word. Well, if you, you keep on preaching Jesus, they don't, they don't make me feel good. They tired of hearing about the cross. They, they tired of hearing about blood. Where would you be without the blood? Where would you be without the cross? It was at the cross that God showed us how much he loved us. Where would you be without the cross? If you miss Jesus, you miss it all. But thank God for preachers who still preach Jesus. Love how that scripture said. That in verse number 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. What was the man reading? Because we didn't read it. He said, the place of the scripture, verse number 32, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb, dumb before his shearer. So open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, and we'll deal with that leading up to Easter, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? Uh It would have been a shame somebody at the church was talking about, that's another man. It's a shame that there's enough people in the world today talking about false messiahs. It's a shame that people will call on names of folk who never raised up from the grave. I believe if you visit Buddha's grave, it's still there. If you visit Muhammad's grave, it's still there. If you visit Krishna's grave, it's still there. Even if you visit Mother Teresa's grave, it's still there. You visit every pope's grave, it's still there. But when you go up to the tomb, praise God, where Jesus was laid, it's not there anymore. The tomb might be there, but you won't find any bones. You won't find a tombstone. You won't find here lies Jesus the one that they call the Christ because my Bible tells me that in three days he rose up from the dead before they could anoint his body with spices rose up with all power the tomb was rolled away the soldiers were put to sleep and they had to come up with a lie and said his disciples took his body well if his disciples took his body Why were they not ashamed to stand before the executioner when it was time for them to die? They still died professing that Jesus is risen. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Church, if you ever get tired of hearing the name of Jesus, ask somebody to pray for you. Because that's what it's all about. You used to, when I was younger, limited of understanding, 
used to not be able to stand the fact that every sermon seemed to end it with Jesus going to the cross. And you heard me many times. I came to a point where I realized that's what it's all about. Everything leads up to Calvary where Jesus died for you and I but got up from the dead on the third day. Thank God for preachers who are not trying to entertain houses. Entertainment only lasts the few moments you're sitting in church. That's why when you leave, you feel tired and sapped of your strength. Because I got up there, but I got up there on a feeling. When the stuff stopped happening for me to get that feeling, I stopped feeling like that. But when you get some solid word in you, and you begin to understand who Jesus is, and what this word is talking about, it's something you can eat on all week long. It's something that'll have you being like, I can't wait to get back to church on Sunday morning because I need to hear more about this Jesus. Matter of fact, I don't want to wait till Sunday. Let me open the book up. Let me go on YouTube. Let me just hear somebody talking about my Savior. Y'all may not believe it, but I, I preach... But I long to hear another preacher every day of the week. I love to hear preaching because it helps me, builds me up, feeds me the truth. It lets me know that the lies the devil is trying to feed me are just those, they are lies. So what do you do? Lastly, my final point, study. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Paul says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Not unto your pastor, but unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. His final warning in this message today. There's a whole lot of messages going forth from Christian pulpits and the devil has infiltrated sermons and there's a whole lot of truth going out with a little bit of lies and if you put a little bit of lie with a bunch of truth you got a big old lie you drop one drop of oil in a cup of water it's ruined that's how lies are they like that film of oil all the way across the water. There's too many people preaching lies today. You need to know the truth for yourself. I keep telling people, look at 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 when he warns that those that did not love the truth were condemned with that great liar, that lawless one. You've got to love the truth. Seek it out. Get some understanding. So I close by asking this. You should ask yourself this when you open your Bible. Do you understand what you read? Will you stand with me? Somebody may be here today. You don't know Christ as your personal Savior. You haven't had any understanding what salvation is all about. But you got just a little bit of understanding today. Enough to know that you need Jesus. Doors of the church are open. Will you come? The first step, thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved.
the mouth confession is made to salvation with the heart man believes unto righteousness that's the starting place maybe here and you're just asking God to give you more understanding you are saved but you may be in that place where I've been where you feel like you're not getting anything you're praying for understanding. You may not want anybody to know, but I want you to know I'm praying for you. It's a lonely place to be. Sad place to be. Makes you feel sick in your spirit. Maybe here in the Holy Spirit just put on your heart to join with this church, church family. Maybe here because you need special prayer. Who was that that said they were going to the hospital this week? I want to pray for you. I heard some praises go up at the altar, but I did hear that. <laughs> 